In FTL, you guide your spaceship from no to no, trying to avoid the enormous fleet of spaceships chasing you down. You're in control of pretty much everything in the game, whether that be the weapons you have, the rooms you build, or even where certain people stand. In all honesty, I play most of the game paused, trying to think of the next move that won't have enormous and devastating repercussions. Seriously, the entire game you feel as if you're on the brink of death. One wrong move and you'll be blown up and punished for your stupidity. And it's normally not a quick ending, it's a slow, drawn out battle as you watch your crew die, your shield destruct and all your systems fail. It's pretty devastating, especially when a run can last for sometimes one or even two hours. You navigate from waypoint to waypoint, encounter Entering various dialogue interactions, having little fights, and buying stuff from various shops with scraps scavenged from other destroyed spaceships. Justin Ma, one of the developers, said in an interview with VideoGameWriters.com that he and Matt Davis intended for each run to have a 10% success rate even for skilled players. It was only a few weeks before release that Justin himself was able to beat the game, as opposed to platformers where each attempt is quickly reset on death so you feel inclined to try again. In FTL, it feels genuinely awful when you die. Like, you have to experience it to believe it, but it is so heartbreaking to watch this little crew, some of which you had since the beginning, if you've built your own little internal narrative to their personality, is brutally slaughtered by the opposition. But why does FTL hate you? And why is it so easy to start again? And why is their second game, Into the Breach, so easy in comparison? So yeah, if you've played FTL before, you know it hates you. But why is it so brutal. I've been designing my own roguelike recently and I have a goal for the difficulty such that a good player will win the easiest difficulty 100% of the time. Although there is randomness, it is vastly overshadowed by the importance of skill and how a player can use that randomness to their advantage. Go play the demo by the way, I'd love to hear what you think. In a roguelike, it makes a lot of sense to have a consistent game experience like this. Other classic roguelikes also design their games around this idea that a skilled player should be able to beat the game every time consistently. There are only a few outliers that break free from this mold. A game like Noita also hates the player, but plopping them in an incredibly hostile environment and adding tons of creative ways to die. A skilled player could definitely see more things coming, but the game is far from consistent and that is the joy behind it. And FTL is like that, although a skilled player might know every single little interaction and have great instincts, even a small slip up can potentially cost the run. But unlike Noita, a lot of these deaths aren't entirely random. You're not suddenly thrown into an unfair fight or intentionally given bad equipment. Instead, your decisions lead you to every interaction you have, and your death is entirely your fault. And FTL provides tons of opportunities to make the wrong decision. So the first reason FTL hates you is because providing that possibility for error forces players to grow incredibly familiar with the intricacies of the game. In a game like Slay the Spire, a player who beats the first ascension doesn't necessarily have a very deep understanding of the game. They may have just found a build that was easy to play and worked. Instead, in FTL, you're encouraged to learn the depth of these systems and use that knowledge to your advantage. Not only does it make a player more appreciative of the depth, but it reveals all these new opportunities for strategy that simply wouldn't be considered if the game was any easier. And when you get a victory with these skills, it is so incredibly rewarding. It's a feeling of satisfaction that only 24% of players have felt. In 1985, psychologists Gordon O'Brien and Thomas Pair conducted an experiment on the link between the difficulty of a task and the satisfaction upon completion. They collected a sample of participants with varying competence at the given task, as well as different levels of self-esteem. They added a cash prize to the participants who performed the best to incentivize genuine attempts at the tasks, which involved a series of increasingly difficult cognitive puzzles. Unsurprisingly, the tasks that were the most difficult provided the most satisfaction to the subjects. But interestingly, subjects with low self-esteem regarding their competence gained substantially less satisfaction. This was really interesting because it implies that if you don't think you will be able to do a task, you will feel less satisfied when that task is completed. Kind of the opposite of what I'd guess, and it was unconclusive as to why this relationship existed. If we link this back to FTL, however, we can start to see 
see why players enjoy the game despite its notoriously brutal difficulty. Although most players are terrible at the game, myself included, they have high self-esteem going into each run. The reason that is, is because the chances are each time a run has ended, there is a lesson to take away and despite the punishing finale, there's this sense of hope because you'll never make that mistake again. So FTL can get away with being incredibly punishing because not only is it fair, it's also just got the right amount of depth where it's not too complicated but there's always some new lesson to learn. You're always going to jump back on that horse because there's this nagging that next run you'll get just that little bit further. Losing in video games has always been a topic for discussion because for some games, losing is so destructive that only the most determined, resilient players can jump back up on that horse. Playing Minecraft on hardcore mode is not something that everyone can bear because there reaches a point where you've made so much that if you were to die, you'd never come back to it. Survival games really have to consider death because, you know, they're about survival and what if you don't survive? Some city builders also have to consider this. Should it ever be possible for a player's city to be irreversibly destroyed? How will this impact the player's thoughts on the game? Will they feel inclined to play again? Does it detract from the experience? Losing a roguelike, to me at least, has become such a familiar thing that I now find it relatively easy to play another round because I know that I'm supposed to lose. It's a very different experience when you lose hours of progress in a game that you're not really supposed to lose in. So fortunately, FTL only really works as a roguelike. That is its major excuse when it does everything possible to ruin you. That even if you get absolutely pummeled, you're supposed to lose, so don't worry about it. But what's so curious about FTL is that the developers then went on to develop another strategy game. It shares many similarities in aesthetics and complex decision making, however, it's like way easier. Like it's not easy, but compared to the masochism of FTL, it's a walk in the park. After about four hours and plenty of head scratching, I got my first win on normal difficulty. And as a new player, I'd certainly played in a sub-optimal fashion, but as opposed to FTL, FTL, that imperfection was excused. Then, after my first win, I was sent back to the start with tons of new content to sink my teeth into, but it felt so different to FTL. I think I preferred the strategy in Into the Breach, but something about the brutal difficulty of FTL makes it more fun to play for some crazy reason, and I have unlocked much harder difficulties in Into the Breach now, which I am yet to get very far on, but these are optional challenges for experienced players, whereas normal mode on FTL is already a huge challenge. And so, despite looking similar, even feeling similar to play at times, Into the Bridge and FTL have incredibly different design philosophies. And I think the reason Into the Bridge didn't quite attract the audience that FTL did was because of these differences. Let's have a look at this review. I've played the game for about five hours and reached the end a few times on normal. I wanted to love it, but I just don't. Apparently, a lot of people do, but I wanted to give my opinions of the game as it clearly wasn't a game for me. Minimal improvement over the course of a run, in FTL and roguelikes in general, you get substantially stronger during the run. In Into the Breach, I feel like I could have almost as easily beaten the final level with base stats as with what I had in the actual runs. Replay value is also pretty low. This is related to the minimal improvements that happen during the run. All of the runs with the same squad just feel identical, and there is not much variety in how I played a certain squad. They then go on to say that they think it's a very tight puzzle game, but they just don't see themselves coming back to it. And I think that's completely fair enough, and a lot of that does indirectly link back to the difference between Into the Breach and FTL in the way that they handle difficulty. Into the Breach is a puzzle game first and foremost, so despite how overpowered you get, no puzzle should be trivial. But in a roguelike, a big part of it is being able to find the interactions between items and making decisions during your run to try to outscale the in increasing strength of enemies. In FTL, this comes in the form of weaponry, certain crew members, rooms you can build, and plenty more. But in Into the Breach, a lot of this extra customization is abandoned simply because it's incongruent with the puzzle nature of the game. Into the Breach is still massively popular, especially considering how many indie roguelikes go unnoticed these days. However, it just doesn't quite pull players back in like FTL does. And a big part of that comes down to the insane difficulty of FTL. Thanks 
for watching the video. It's been ages since I've released something, so sorry for that break. Part of that is writer's block. Part of that is I've spent most time developing Fish TDX. Either way, please download the demo of Fish TDX and give it a go. I've literally spent the last six months of my life working on it, and yeah, I'd really appreciate some feedback. I'll see you in the next one.